Uh, we'll talk this morning on uh, OpenSpacesSports.com here this morning. Travis Betts joins us, the athletic director at Colby High School. Good morning, Travis. How are you? Good, Rich. Good morning. Well, uh, it's been a different uh, summer, and it's been a different year in 2020 since about the 12th of August, or the 12th of um, March, I think. Uh, would you, I mean, I can't think that you could have imagined anything like this even happening. No, I, it seems from March 12th, I mean, that's a date that forever st- stand in my mind. We were actually coming back from state basketball on the 11th, I believe, and uh, we stopped in Ellsworth, and it was just like the ball started rolling, the NBA canceled their season, and then before you know it, the next day, uh, NCAA basketball was canceling tournaments, and then the big tournament got canceled, then spring sports in NCAA, and then high school sports followed not after that long. And May or March to May seemed like standstill time, to be honest. Yeah, you know, and almost uh, probably indescribable the feeling that you and I would guess all teachers and all coaches had, uh, and even and obviously the students too. I mean, you'd be almost stunned, weren't you? Yes, totally stunned. Never thought I'd see something like this in my lifetime. I guess so. Well, and and so how soon after all this happened did you and uh, the administration, particularly, I guess because you're involved in, in as an athletic director in the middle school and the high school. I mean, you had to start thinking about this upcoming school year, which is now just weeks away from starting. Uh, you had to finish out that year and then get ready for this year. Uh, a lot of meetings or not? Oh, a ton of meetings. And I'd say, you know, the, the first meetings we had were obviously to come up with our continuous learning plan to finish out the school the school year and then not long after that probably around easter start getting things ready of course last year was a year for you know sports like football and basketball and baseball and softball the two-year contracts were up so we had already set up all those contracts so a lot of that was already done it was just finishing up some things and getting ready and then of course in may we were waiting on guidelines to come out from Keisha to see what we could do in the summer. And then that happened and we had to start doing a lot of planning for, you know, health guidelines and different things for our weight room and any uh, basketball, volleyball we were going to have this summer. And so here we are, uh, August the 4th, I think it is right now as we prepare for another school year. In fact, I think I just uh, heard that the board is actually meeting this Thursday, I guess, to kind of determine officially when we're going to start school. I, it does appear that Keisha has said uh, athletic practices will start as scheduled on August the 17th. Is that correct? That is correct. And so with that in mind, uh, your schedule for, let's say, all the – fall sports and and it's a little different obviously uh for you uh and also for anybody else as far as that's concerned uh in the league the GWAC uh putting those schedules together that was as you said done already do you at this time anticipate any changes or do you have to be ready to go with the flow uh probably ready to go with the flow I know we're looking at a few of our dates in particular sports where um, some of the places that we would travel have had a kind of a hot spot, a high risk for COVID. So we're looking at those dates. Um, As far as, you know, those initial dates for everything, I think we're going to roll with that. Now, the one thing that we will not be doing is the uh, football jamboree. We're just you know, Keisha's encouraged schools not to have those jamborees. And we were going to have Ellis and Norton and Goodland come in for our jamboree. And we just think it's better with the situation that's going on right now just to 
not host the Jamboree this year and then hopefully get back to that next year. All right. All right. Is there any plan to have um, what they used to call the soap scrimmage a week prior to the opening of the season on September the 4th uh, for football and also a volleyball scrimmage or not? I think I think they're planning um, for both right now, kind of in planning stages. But I know I've talked with the coaches and that's kind of what they're looking at maybe doing is having, you know, the volleyball scrimmage. Of course, the volleyball is going to be in action a week earlier than football. They're scheduled to go to Hayes the 29th of August to play in the tournament. And as of right now, that's a go. And then uh, football will be September 4th at Hugoton. So they'll play the week before in a scrimmage, kind of like we've done in the past, a Gatorade scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, let me ask about fans. Uh, has there been a discussion? Is there currently ongoing or has it already been determined? Hey, we're only going to allow this many fans in. You're having to, consider social distancing in the bleachers and on the sidelines, et cetera. Uh, is there somebody going to police that? What's the plan? Do you know? Well, right now we haven't, we don't have a set plan for Colby. Um, tomorrow morning, the GWAC ADs are getting together and we're just going to bounce ideas off each other, kind of where everybody's looking as far as things like that, attendance and, uh, you know, uh, concession stands, gates, all those kinds of things. See, you know, try to try to come together as a league and be on the same page. You know, I know some of the other leagues have uh, met and determined some things, but probably know a lot more after tomorrow and Thursday night's board meeting as far as that goes. Yeah, are we, do you feel like we're at a an advantage, so to speak, because we are in the northwest part of Kansas in a more rural area, and even the conference for that matter, when you take a look at Ulysses and Hugoton, and, and of course, Cimarron's kind of in a hotbed down there in the Dodge City and Ford County community, uh, maybe, I guess you could say, but Scott City, Goodland, Colby, that were rural, uh, that we don't have to worry as much about it as you would in a more urban area like a Wichita, Kansas, and a Topeka, those communities? I think so, you know, and we've, I've been looking at that, and administration's been looking at that as far as, you know, the teams we're scheduled to play, not just in conference, but, you know, our district games and football, and then, of course, our other fall sports, golf and tennis and cross country. Most of the uh, competitions we have scheduled, I think, you know, we're going to be okay as long as we can keep this thing under control out here. But, you know, there's a few that we're going to need to look to, and that's probably just going to be, you know, on a week-by-week -week basis. It might be the week of, and, you know, somebody uh, has a jump in cases, and we might have to, you know, consider canceling at that point. Yeah, I think you can't almost, uh, I would guess, uh, um, I guess you have to really wait till the moment that that happens, I would think, because, uh, you know, do you reschedule a, a scheduled football game for a midweek contest or or whatever, or do you just flat just cancel it? Those, those are variable possibilities, I would guess, right? Right. And, you know, uh, Keisha's, you know, kind of told schools that, uh, as far as those kind of things go, those, you know, contracts should be forgiven more or less, you know, you know, they said they don't want anybody purposely not scheduling or not playing a game because of an opponent or whoever it might be. But I don't see anybody uh, doing that. Uh, middle school, the same way a little bit. I mean, in terms of uh, preparation and schedules, they're already put together, aren't they? Right. They're already put together. And, for the most part, the middle school, uh, I don't see any problems there at the moment. You know, we, basically it's a league schedule or it's some surrounding towns as far as cross country and volleyball go and even football. So I think we look okay there. You know, I know Garden City High School's put together a plan. They've, they've shared it with our league, some of our league schools and Garden City's you know, that's one thing we'll probably talk about tomorrow. Garden City is doing a thing with 
football that it's a tiered deal and it just depends on the opponent you're playing what kind of tier or risk that might be you know for somebody for instance say like if we're going to play goodland that'd be a low risk for us but then if we were going to play somebody say if we did have a a wichita or a kansas city school on our schedule then we'd probably have a lot of restrictions in place that's kind of where gardens went so i know we're going to try to share some ideas and plans tomorrow kind of what we're thinking each league school and then uh, you know probably try to come together and come to some sort of agreement to go forward you know uh, one of the things i know you're probably in the coaches uh, in the winter in the least uh, wrestling and basketball and uh, is what i'm thinking of i guess but the new event center uh, is I think they're hoping to have it ready to go in January sometime, possibly weather permitting, and then get it done as they would uh, planned, I guess. But there's got to be a lot of anticipation to play in that new facility, uh, the kids and the coaches both, I would guess, right? Oh, yeah. I know everybody's looking forward to, you know, and I'd love to be able to host our uh, Eagle Invitational Tournament in there, that would sure make things so much easier for us to have it all in one location instead of three locations like we do, but it's probably not going to happen this year, but, you know, Orange and Black, I hope, hopefully we can host the Orange and Black in there, and that'll help out, and, you know, it'll help out, too, with a lot of the health guidelines and things we have now, too, by having everything in one place. Yeah, I think uh, that's exactly correct, because I think the thing that we have to remember that you guys will have to uh, execute is uh, preparation and, uh, you know, wiping everything down and getting it all cleaned up after every event prior to the next event. And then again, uh, uh, what's the plan as far as checking for temperatures for kids and uh, things like that? I know I would guess everybody will be checked for temperature when they come to school, but Will coaches say, uh, hey, we want to check your temperature before practice every day as an athlete or not? Do you know? Or has that, uh, con- that decision been made? That decision hasn't been made yet. We're still getting some feedback uh, from families and staff. So I know that's probably one of the things that will be discussed at the uh, board meeting on Thursday, and we'll go from there. Are you able to relax, Travis? No. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen you on here talking to Mike uh, Sadler and I, you know, his his uh, worries and anxieties are probably more than mine. But, you know, I feel like Mike, you know, you know, you never know from one day or one sometimes one hour to the next what's going to change or what's going to happen. So you just got to go with the flow, I guess, you know, that, you know, whatever we can do, I know our coaches and our athlete and our teachers and administration community. I mean, I think everybody's willing to do whatever we need to do to make sure that we can have these kids back in school on site and participate in activities. Yeah, I think it's critical. I think uh, the kids want it. And uh, I know that uh, I think the teachers, I think you're right. I think everybody wants it and they understand the value in it. Uh, Appreciate the opportunity to visit. I'll visit with you more as the uh, year goes on and I'll be covering the Eagles as I have for nearly 40 years and uh, uh, maybe more than ever on the video streaming. uh, There'll be more interest than there's ever been and we'll try to do the best we can. Hey, we appreciate everything you do for the school, Rich, and look forward to talking to you again. All right, Travis Betts visiting with us and joining us. Thank you very much for joining me today as the high school sports season is just around the corner.